Hi guys, this is Oliver Eaton, also known as the Blue Sun, as you can see here. Uh, this is the start of a many pack series where I'm going through how to make a decent looking game and a good looking game uh, on the physics puzzle maker game creator on Sploder. So I'm going to start off f with uh, kind of introducing you to the layouts and what every thing does on this creator and then I will eventually go in to how to make a basic game and then sort of build it up to make it to a big uh, kind of a blockbuster game of Sploder. So this one is the first part and if you are familiar with it and you're trying to improve from one stage, uh, keep placing the next episode which annotation what should be in the corner uh, depending if the show is out uh, by then and you will get to a point where you are. But first of all I'm starting with the real basics just going through what everything is on this game creator. Uh, so I'm just going to drag this in uh, so I can see how much I've recorded. Uh, don't mind about that actually. Uh, so yeah, this is the very basics of this creator. So uh, when you do open it up, uh, like see so you got this option of a tour. You can take the tour, which will go through it. Or you can carry on watching. Uh, click the X button, uh, which will be in the corner. Then you come onto this screen. So uh, the key things you will see first is this panel down here the prefabs as selected uh, this gives you the option of play a body platform coin spikes and extra life and then on here are uh, some other uh, already built things now these would be at the moment your heart of what you use however once you get past this working this uh, these will come very basic and not to use but these are what you will use uh, in the basic parts of this uh, to get used to it, but first of all, what I want you to look out for is these panels here. These are mostly the important panels you need. This one with the pen on or the pencil is your draw tool. Now, the draw tool allows you to draw whatever shape in this canvas area. Of course, the shape will depend on whatever you draw here. So, square, square, uh, that shape, or this one. We can draw a custom shape and it comes like that. This is a really important tool, and what comes with this, most importantly, is these four areas here. These four, of course, this one is the shape, but this one is really important to how your game could work. As you see, it says, choose how to constrain the physical motion of this object. So, you get the option of four. Now, these uh, could change how your game plays. Uh, the most common one is this icon here. Uh, this would... Uh, appear on one of these shapes west let me just draw this shape uh so like this here i've just drawn this random shape in the area if we were to test that all the rest will fall down however this one does stay up because that's because this tool here means uh, the object stays in it, it placed where you place it it stays there this tool uh, means you can move it around the thing moves around but it only goes up down left or right it doesn't spin around uh, by spin around I mean like you know rotate uh, this one is for rotating if you want it to rotate around a point uh, we will get into all these uh, but this one is what it normally default is and this is just like all these objects, it falls down to the gravity of the map, wherever the gravity is. This area now is one where I don't really choose much, but this is where you choose kind of the material of the object you put down. So you can have uh, all these ones. We'll get into that more in the advance. And the same for this. This is how they have a crush meter on it. And uh, this one is the most crushable, like the most delicate uh, brittle and this one is rock hard and it can be smashed but we'll come into uh, these two very late in tutorial as well as uh, more of these but so far uh, as you can see we've drawn a couple shapes I'm just going to erase that and let's carry on so on this tool this is uh, one of your main common pricked tools uh, this tool uh, allows you to touch objects so let's say I was going to draw a shape let's just draw a square for this instance uh, this lets you select it because if you try selecting it on this tool uh, you'll find you'll just draw another object instead uh, so let's just cancel that out so here you can move it and drag it and here uh, rotate it and spin it just by clicking and dragging along the screen so we've got this square we've got as you see more options available up here kind of similar to the same but you may have noticed now we've got the introduction of these five options or six 
uh, but mainly these five. So this one allows you to lock the movement of this object. This means uh, the object cannot be moved if someone wants to edit it or something, but that's not really important. Uh, this one and this one, however, will be your most important buttons. However, they're more when you get advanced, so I'll go into them uh, when we start making our basic game. This is to group objects, which, uh, as as uh, it pretty much suggests, it groups objects up like that. And so I select them, they all move together. And then this button is to delete them. And it will have your option, you press OK, and it deletes them. When if you notice when you haven't got anything clicked so uh, let's say we've had we've got the squares and we're on here uh, as you see we've got the eight uh, or nine options here when you click off you get four new options appear these also are your most important in from basic and this is what you have to really go to before you start doing anything you have the play field option what allows the size of view so the size of the game for the basics uh, i would suggest a normal size and then go into this double side and zoom the play field physics is also really important this uh, turns on or off gravity and motion resistance uh, gravity and motion resistance i will touch on uh, also this the boundaries now the boundaries is kind of the game area if it's open objects could fly off the screen which can have as an objective ground means either the ground is uh, strong uh, but all the other space is open kind of like standing on earth and you could go off to the left and right camera and up into the sky we can't fall through the ground being closed means and the objects could hit the bottom sides or the top and not fly off the screen okay so you would click these options and click apply now one thing what people on Spudder tend not to find uh, which is a real problem is the background icon the, by default you normally have this purple background and to be honest I really think this signifies that you know you don't know really uh, how to explore things so that's why you're watching this tutorial and I'm going to teach you how to change this background uh, so of course you click on background and as you can see we've got the simple style uh, slider sorry and uh, you can customize your background with all these different filters and objects uh, all these things so you see we've got a nicer background uh, when we get into more advanced stuff we could create our custom backgrounds instead but that's when we get late in tutorial so uh, yeah just set whatever background you want at the time uh, let's have some uh, blue sky here but uh, we'll get back into that a bit later again now the goals is uh, first of all the most important thing on this whole physics as without this goal uh, the game wouldn't be possible and how to play uh, is not as important as this section here. This section is your heart of your game. Uh, top score to win is the objection, objective of the game. Of course, if it's a scoring game, which, uh, first of all, the basic games, it's going to be a game where you're collecting coins. Uh, you know, you change however many coins there is, so there may be early two or one. Uh, but again, we'll get to that when we make our game our first game of course there's time limit and lives but we will like i said get into this and then last of all is uh the option what's probably least important but it does add a bit of effect to your game it's the music from different artists uh, there's loads of different music uh, to put on to your game while you're playing the game uh that is this tool if you tune in to part two we'll go through the rest and start making our game Alright guys, welcome back to this Splutter tutorial. In the first part, we went through uh, just the start of the very basics uh, before you start in the game if you're new to Splutter. Uh, we're going to quickly try and finish this off quickly. Uh, this is similar to this option, however this one allows you to drag and uh, highlight an area. It's kind of the exact same. Uh, this is now uh, another important tool. This gets to see the colour. As you see here, we've got the just the plain shapes, but as you can see, these squares are the default brown. So let's add some colour uh, with these new options. As you can see, uh, it's kind of the same layout as each of the tabs. However, if you notice, they are different options. The first one is very simply the colour. So uh, let's say we want a yellow square here and a red square there. Uh, you can experiment with the colours. Uh, and you've got the borders of them as well. Uh, let's have black for this one and let's have this shadowy uh, effect on this one. Okay, as you can see, simply there. Now, this is a texture to put on here, so you could put 
uh, whatever textures you want. Uh, let's say we have uh, these. We've got kind of a snowy square and a red square. Okay, so again, it's all experiments. Experiments. Uh, now, this tool uh, for the basic game, you may not need it as such yet, but this will be your layer tool. Uh, so let's say we want that above that, or we want this one above this one, uh, so far. But that's when it gets more advanced, when there's more layers of the game for you to add in on the backgrounds and that. But again, that will be in a lot later tutorial. And of course, if you feel that you already know this stuff, uh, keep clicking the next episode until you get to the point you're at. Okay, so as you can see, we have got two squares and coloured them in. Uh, you may notice these options now. The ones I tend to use are... Uh, these three here, but at the moment for making a basic game uh, You no, don't need to worry about these, but they will uh, Come in to it when I'm ready. Uh, this tool is not really a common tool But if you want him to turn a color, uh, it's just a color select tool as you can see It's gone yellow for the object and you could go back to this tool uh, So that is basically all you need to know about these bars at the uh, top of course uh, if you're on Spudder, you would know the new uh, to create a new game, load to load a previous save game. You got your saves tool. The test is important because you always want to test your game, and the final publish button, and of course the levels uh, here if you want to create or take away a level there. Okay, so uh, let's finally get into making kind of a basic game. But surely uh, you probably wonder what these tabs are. Uh, these are different physics and the controls and widgets, what you can add to your game. These will come more in when we get into more advanced game. Uh, of course, we will be using some uh, widgets uh, in this, including the elevator, when we do start to make our basic games. But mostly for the basic games, we're going to be using the basic prefabs, uh, the default. And uh, if you're wondering how to get these on, instead of clicking, you drag and drop. Uh, now, it says... It won't drag and drop onto existing objects, so that's probably because I've got these here. Uh, but if you drag it and drop into empty space, as you can see, it comes there and you can resize it. But we'll get into this when we get into making the basic game on the next part. As you can see, uh, we've got the player, and if I were to test it, uh, we would have the player here. Uh, just going around the map. Uh, so, as you can see, we're already starting to make kind of a game space. Uh, but that is... Basically the drag and drop, and again uh, with these drag and drops you can change your colour, uh, so what, so I've uh, wiped this guy's face off completely, but uh, let's get uh, him back, but as you can see we've got that. Now you may notice uh, the introduction with these characters, uh, these arrows what have appeared, these blue arrows here. Uh, well, when you go back on to this tool here, the select tool, uh, these arrows come a bit lighter to see. And as you can see, these will be your controls uh, under the control section. As the prefabs are already built uh, things, uh, these save you time in making them yourself. Uh, the, so the controls, these are your controls for the user to play the game. And of course, uh, are really the hat, without these, your play wouldn't be able to move. Uh, so let's just show you what happens without them. So uh, let's say I just drew in a square and put a smiley face on it, like like this one. I've just done uh, this instead. Uh, as you can see, I can't move anything. The arrow keys do not work. This is what the blue arrows. So uh, let's just go back to the square. Uh, this would be more advanced when making it, but back to this section. Uh, if you want to make in move, uh, you put like a slider, drag and drop onto the object, and the arrow will appear here. So let's just put that static here. The arrow will appear here. And of course, uh, you can have the jumper tool, which in a graphic, uh, in a gravity area. So as you can see, if you remember from the play field, the gravity is on. Uh, you want the jumper instead of mover. Uh, so as you can see, he jumps up and down. Now I may just saw we lost the life. That's because this guy is the active character. Uh, and sensors are on, but again, that will come more into it uh, when I go through the physics of how the game works in a later episode. Okay, so uh, you should know now you roundabout, just practice dragging and dropping uh, objects onto the screen uh, in the prefab section, uh, and just to get used to like changing the colours and that in, in before making a game, uh, just to get used to it, and of course, changing the colours, because... Uh, uh, one thing what people do is they make a basic game uh, using these platforms, however they make it with a purple background. I'm going to try and 
save that step instead of discovering it yourself uh, instead me discovering it with you uh, just to get you a bit more advanced and as you can see it already looks alright I know it's not a game but it looks alright now there's one thing you probably noticed uh, what uh, I haven't talked about uh, this is this area down here it says clipboard and it's got the arrows these are of course the undo arrows uh, which will go as far uh, as they do but the clipboard this will get uh, we'll get more into the advance of the clipboard this would be ideal if you've got your own intro uh, and to copy levels from other games you made or what other people made uh, onto your own game but uh, we'll get into that maybe in a later episode so uh, hopefully you do understand now some of the features uh, in uh, in this physics we go go through to how to make a basic game uh, next on the next tutorial so click the next episode uh, there and I'll see you there Peace for now.